Okay, I'm going to go into some bone structure and function, but focusing on gross anatomy. So this means the bone as an organ, um, big picture stuff, opposed to the cells that we'll go into next. So to start with, there are different bone shapes. We're going to be focusing on long bones. We're going to use long bones as our kind of example, go over the anatomy of a long bone. Some of those anatomical, um, some of those anatomical terms will apply to other bones, but some they're going to vary, right? And we're not going to go over the internal anatomy of all these shapes of bones. Long bones are bones that are longer than they are wide. This is a lot of bones in your body. So all the, most of the appendages and many others as well. Um, the short bones, these are more like cubes. So these would not be considered long bones. They're not gonna have quite the same structures inside. Um, we will see flat bones. These are very thin. So sternum is shown here. Um, skull would be another place. We'll see thin. We'll, we'll look at some thin bones and look at the anatomy of them. Otherwise, you know there's different shape bones. Irregular are going to have irregular shapes. There's different types of irregular shapes. Um, sesamoid just refers to the patella in humans, like a sesame seed. Um, and again, we're not going to look at the detailed anatomy of each of these. We're going to focus primarily on, on long bone. And that's actually where we're going next. So long bone anatomy, when I say bone anatomy, I mean um, the organ. So the bone as an organ. One of the tissue types in this bone is bone tissue. The other name for bone tissue is osseous tissue. So let's write this out. Contains osseous tissue. If you prefer to use the term osseous tissue, you are welcome to. It is, however, the same as bone tissue. Just make sure you know what you're talking about, and I'm talking about bone, the organ, or bone, the tissue. Okay, this is also an adult long bone. We'll talk a little bit about development um, a couple times this week. But this would be an adult long bone. Let's start with the regions of the bone. So first of all, there are ends to the bone. They're called epiphyses. So this is the proximal epiphysis. Epiphysis. Proximal because it's closer to the body. This would be the, the humerus and that's the shoulder joint. The other end is also called the epiphysis. This is the distal epiphysis. The whole shaft is then called the diaphysis. Uh, and let's not worry about this other name here. Just assume this goes kind of that far. I'm not going to test you on exactly where those regions end. Okay, um, let's just start at the top here. So in addition to osseous tissue, we're gonna have other tissue types as well. Right here, one of them is shown. This is um, articular cartilage made from what type of cartilage? Hyaline. Right, the articular cartilage is always hyaline cartilage. So same thing down here. I put articular with okay. cartilage. Um, this is going to be important for articulations where this bone connects with another bone at the joint. We then have within the epiphysis here, this is spongy bone. This is loose, looser then compact bone. Um, I will just label compact bone now. It's down here. Compact bone makes up most of the diaphysis of long bones because it's very strong. It's very dense. Spongy bones are in the epiphyses as well as in different shape bones are going to make up the inside of the bone. Um, in the spongy bone, there is red bone marrow. This is important for red blood cell and white blood cell. Sorry, all blood cell production. Um, it's easier to remember red blood cell because it's red, but there's also white blood cells that are formed there. In adults, red bone marrow is only located in those epiphyses, those, those ends. This line in between here, um, obviously red bone marrow would take up this entire, red bone marrow is overlaps with the spongy bone. But the line here is called the 
could the seal line, it is the growth plate um, after the growth is over. We'll look at growth later in a developing bone that would call, be called the epiphyseal plate. So this is kind of what's left over from where the bone grew. Okay. Um, we did compact bone. Compact bone is surrounded, well, and actually spongy bone too. All of this bone is surrounded by something called periosteum. You can see it right here. Peri means around. And osteum refers to the bone. Um, endosteum is the inner layer. So it's actually dense connective tissue that covers the bone um, around the outside and then the inside as well. The endosteum also, endo is in, right, inside, also lines the medullary cavity. So that's what this is here. I'm going to make this a little bit longer. So a cavity is an opening, right? So this is the cavity. It would be lined with endosteum and then not actually empty. It would be full of yellow bone marrow. as well as blood vessels, which this picture doesn't show very well that they're actually in there as well. Um, bone is vascular. There are blood vessels that both um, connect to it outside as well as, here's a picture, there we go, of the blood vessels and really how much they can infiltrate that medullary cavity. So that's what I'm trying to show here because this picture doesn't show it well. So that would be located within the medullary cavity, within the diaphysis, surrounded by compact bone. Okay, I think we got all of those terms. Okay, let's do a learning check to have you apply what you just learned to a flat bone should be able to do this even though it's a different bone using these terms. Okay, let's go in a little bit more talking about spongy versus compact bone. Um, remember that compact is more dense, spongy is looser. It has kind of like a lattice-like structure. And these are called, that's I, trabeculae. That's what these like actual lines that make up the structure of the of the spongy bone are called. Whereas compact bone is very dense and we'll look at its structure more in detail. Um, most bones have compact bone on the outside and then spongy bone on the in the middle or somewhere in the middle. For a long bone that would only be at the ends um, long bones have a lot of compact bone along the shaft in order to provide strength where support's needed. So compact bone is much is stronger. It's located on the diaphysis of long bone of uh, yeah long bones because of that. Um, in places where muscles attach, it's going to be even thicker. Um, whereas spongy bone is less sturdy, it has this open spaces where there's cells and um, open space between those calcified trabeculae. So this part is the part that is calcified. In between the lattice, there's open space. Um, spongy bone is still very strong and it can withstand force in many different directions. So it's good for, for example, um, sh short bones, like these cube-like ones, where you might have force equally likely applied in any direction. It's going to allow for that kind of like dense irregular connective tissue. It's going to be just as strong, whereas long bones are designed to take force kind of along the long axis where the, and where the muscles pull. Um, Compact bone is designed to take force a little bit more in one direction. Okay, that's the basics of those two types of bone. Um, learning check for you here. 
this in this picture there are not things shown in the cavity, what three things could potentially be located in that medullary cavity? Okay, Here, here's one of them with two different types. Um, a little bit more about bone marrow. So in the in, in an infant, there is both red and yellow bone marrow in a long bone. This is a long bone. Um, it, it, first, it's mostly red. Um, red marrow. As we grow, that yellow marrow starts getting infiltrated by yellow bone marrow. And that's how we get to by adulthood. Our red bone marrow is really just located red marrow in the epiphysis of certain long bones. Um, femur and humerus are two big ones, but they have a large head like that. Um, they're also located, actually I have a picture of this that I will bring up. Um, the other places that red bone marrow is located, again, these other bones that are other shapes, would be the skull, ribs, uh, pelvis, vertebrae. And again, that's in addition to these two um, epiphyses. And that over developmental time changes.